I was recently contacted and offered some free items in exchange for a video demonstrating me using them. I responded by saying that I would only accept them if they were okay with me giving my true opinion, good or bad, and they agreed. So let's continue with the unboxing and see what we've got. Some solder. Get a mask. And then the star of the show. Okay, first up is a soldering gun kit from New Alkalox that came with a roll of solder, a solder sucker, and a couple pairs of tweezers that'll really come in handy for me personally. Two pairs of tweezers. Yeah, there it goes. Put this through there. As you might have noticed, this iron has a solder feeder built in. I've never used any gun like this. I think that's pretty cool. But as I just said during the video, I think it's pretty cool. I'm excited to try it out. This box is heavy. Next up is this magnetic helping hands kit from Ioku. Ioku? I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. And this is going to be a lifesaver for me personally. If you've watched any of my other videos where I'm soldering something, I tend to use random tools and just whatnot to help hold the stuff that I'm trying to solder. Oh, I'm excited for this right here. You don't even know. Got some feet. that light so oh it is a lamp very nice oh yeah that's a nice magnifying glass the controller for it off on I'm assuming brighter I don't know what that is joints. Pretty uh, heavy duty there. And finally, the plate. That, that's got some freaking weight to it, buddy. Basically, golly, those are some strong magnets. I was worried about that, but that is. That's gonna make storage so much nicer, too. Uh, they all have little threaded, uh, like, grub screws. And I 
got the little feet for the bottom of this. Oh, that's USB. That's a uh, that's a strike right there. I don't want USB power. Give me give me a lamp on a plug, a regular plug. As you just heard, I'm not exactly thrilled that the lamp is USB powered, mainly because it means I have to find an old USB wall wart somewhere that I can hook this into. It's not a deal breaker by any means. When I demonstrate the lamp a little later in this video, the light is plenty bright enough to use. I just personally would have preferred being able to plug this into any outlet. Mainly because if I move this or take this somewhere with me, now I have to bring along the wall wart too. I have to make a guitar cable. And I got a feeling that I'm gonna love this thing. It'll definitely work. Here it is. Alright, so a while ago I ordered and installed these recessed LED lights to replace the old lighting in my kitchen. But a few months in, one started blinking like this, and I ended up taking it down and looking at the main board. That's when I noticed a capacitor was bulged. So I ended up replacing that capacitor, and it started working again perfectly. But now I have another one doing the same thing. So it's kind of perfect timing to try out the iron and the helping hands. First thing I did was take apart the metal box that houses the main board by prying the lid off. After that, I took out this black plastic box and popped the board out of it. This is a close-up of the bulge capacitor. And here are the capacitors I ordered to replace it. Alright, so I've got a little bit of flux on there. I know I already know I'm going to block the camera, but I'm going to try my best not to. So I'm just going to add the tiniest bit of solder. Then I'm going to take some of this braid. Shazam. Okay, the soldering was way easier than the desoldering. Now we can plug it in and test it out. 
Okay, we have it all back together. Fingers crossed. Please don't, don't catch a fire. Holy. Holy, I surprise myself sometimes. Hot damn. Hey, not bad. Not bad top. I also use this clamp attachment to make a couple guitar cables I've been putting off for a while, and it worked perfectly to hold them in place. Much better than trying to rest the cable on a pair of cutters. And I thought I would give this a try at replacing the thumbstick on my nephew's Xbox controller. And to my surprise, it worked pretty well. Is it gonna replace my centuries-old soldering station from Radio Shack? Probably not. Not for everything, anyway. But for a sub-$30 iron, I have no complaints. Now because I can see myself using these quite a bit in the future, I decided to design some 3D printed models for them, starting with some higher feet than the little pads that come with the Helping Hands kit. There's a little slot for an optional magnet too, just to help hold them in place better. So I glued a magnet into each one, and they just slide onto each corner. I got a couple different heights, ranging from 15 to 25, 35 millimeters. Pick whichever ones you'd like. And then I made a holster for the iron to keep it out of the way. This will work on either the left or the right side of the workbench, which is pretty nice. Alright, I think I've put these through some paces, and I'm comfortable recommending them both. I think this iron is pretty good for the money. I was surprised at how well it actually worked. Keep in mind that I haven't really tried any other sub-$30 irons, so this is just my opinion. But the magnetic helping hands are something I don't know how I've lived without. If you've never used helping hands when you're soldering something, go pick up a set as soon as possible. It doesn't even have to be this set, even though this set is really nice, the difference between using one and fighting to keep something still is worth it alone. Alright, that's all I've got for you today. If you enjoyed the video, leave a thumbs up and consider subscribing if you're not already subscribed. I appreciate you tuning in, catch you in the next one, and as always, have the best day ever.